So we're going to discuss some factoring techniques. And we're going to assume some things are already prior knowledge. And then other things we're going to add in as we go along. So we're going to talk about some factoring that you should know. And there's a factoring that is going to be new. So trinomial factoring, first of all, where A is 1, means things like x squared plus 5x plus 6. That's what we're talking about, which trinomial factoring. When a is not 1, we're talking about things like 2x squared plus 5x plus 6, or something like that. Okay, now I'm not sure that these factor, I'm just showing you what the form would look like. And then perfect squares, they all have the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, or minus. And then differences of squares look like this. Okay, these factor as a plus or minus b all squared. These factor as a minus b times a plus b. And again, we're assuming that these things are things you already know how to do. And then a greatest common factor is just taking out whatever is the same in all the terms. So when we talk about specialized factoring techniques, we're going to add into what we already know some things that are bigger than squareds. So all the factoring that you've done up to this point has been quadratics or less. So common factoring or quadratics. Here, we've got a cubic. So the first thing we look for is a common factor. And this one's pretty easy. You can see there's an x in every term. And then what we do is we say, well, if I take an x out of every term, this is what is left. Okay. And then what I would then do is look to see if I can factor this. This is a trinomial. A is 1. So this is what we should already know how to do and understand that that's x minus 4 and x plus 3. So that's how we factor that. The reason we're doing factoring at this point is because we want to then use it to graph polynomial functions. So that's why we're talking about factoring all of a sudden. It seems like it might be, well, why, why are we talking about factoring? Well, th that's why. We want to get to the place where we can graph polynomial functions. So that's a common factor. Okay. The next thing that you need to know is a difference in sum of cubes. So you've done a sum and difference, <coughs> of, well, not a sum of, of squares, because a sum of squares doesn't factor, but a difference of squares. And it's similar to that, but it's a, it's a cube. So it's x cubed minus 27, for example. And what it's saying is, if you have that, let's say x cubed minus 27, then you have something in the form x is the a, and b becomes 3, because that's really x cubed minus 3 cubed, right? So to factor that, you go x minus 3, multiplied by x squared plus 3 times x plus 3 squared, which is 9, okay? If you had something like, let's say, 8x cubed minus 64, let's say. So you have to know that 8 is 2 cubed, and then 64 is 4 cubed. So you have to recognize cubes. And actually, let's change this to a plus just so you can see how the plus 1 works, the sum of cubes. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to go a plus b. So that's 2x plus 4. We're following this right here, up here. So we're saying a plus b, and then we're going to have a squared. So that's going to be my 2x squared, which is 4x squared, and then it's minus ab, right? So it's minus 4 times 2x, which is 8x, and then it's plus b squared, so it's plus 4, right? And 4 squared is 16. Now, you notice that in this question, it's a sum of cubes, but we didn't look for a common factor. Okay, so this works, but you'll notice that in each of these two, this has a common factor of 2, and this has a common factor of 4. OK, 
Okay, so in other words, we would then have to say, well, that's 2 times uh, x plus 2, and then this is 4 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. And that leaves me with 8 multiplied by x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. So instead of doing those steps, even though this is a difference of cubes right away, that should be a cube, sorry, no, no, squared. Even though it's a difference of cubes right away, it doesn't necessarily factor as nicely as if we look for the common factor first. Because the other option is to say, hold on a second, there's a common factor here. So start with 8x cubed plus 64, but then recognize that the common factor is 8. Okay, and then we get x cubed plus 8. Now that right there is still a difference of cubes. So it's 8 multiplied by x cubed plus 2 cubed, right? And that then follows as x plus 2, a plus b, and then a squared, which is x squared, minus 2 times x, because that's a times b, and then plus b squared, which is 4. So we end up with the same answer in both cases. But this one is generally a little more simple. So that's the one we would, we would look for. So when you're recognizing a difference or sum of cubes, the first thing you have to be able to recognize are your common cubes. And then once you've recognized, yes, it is a sum of cubes or it is a difference of cubes, then check for a common factor. All right. Now, what is this memory tool SOAP thing talking about? Well, what it means is... The signs. So the first sign here, okay, is always the same. Let me try this again. This is the same as this, right? This is the opposite, and then this is always positive. That's what it's talking about. So you notice the same, right? Plus and plus, then opposite. So this is minus when that's plus and then always positive. So if you remember that, if you want to remember how to remember a difference of sum of cubes, because the expectation is that you know how to factor different sum of cubes without the formula, then that's how you do it. Same sign first. So if it's a cubed plus b cubed, it's a plus b. And if it's a cubed minus b cubed, it's a minus b. Then opposite sign in the middle. So you notice it's if it's a cubed plus b cubed, it's minus a b. And a cubed minus b cubed becomes plus a b. And then this last term is always positive. So that's what this is talking about. Okay. So we have this sum and difference of cubes. So here's another one. x cubed plus 27. Okay. We did something very similar back here. We did x cubed minus 27. But this one is going to be x plus 3. Right. Same sign first. Then it's x squared. And then opposite, so minus 3x, and then always positive. Here, you're looking for a common factor. There isn't one, so this becomes, this is 4x cubed, and 125 is 5 cubed. And then we follow the same pattern, a plus b, so 4x plus 5, and then multiplied by a squared, so that's 16x squared, because 4 squared is 16, and then minus, right? So the same sign first, positive, then opposite, so minus 5 times 4x, which is 20x. And then finally, always positive, and it's 5 squared, so that's 25. So that's how you do a sum and difference of cubes. Okay, now when you're looking here, this one doesn't look like a sum and difference of cubes, because they're not obviously cubed right this one's to the fourth power and then 192 isn't a perfect cube and neither is three but what we look for is we say well maybe there's a common factor we can see this three going to 192 that's the first thing and it does okay it goes in 64 times so you you take out a three and an x and what's left here is x cubed and what's left here is 192 divided by 3, so 64. And then the x is gone. So you're left with x cubed minus 64. And now that is a difference of cubes. 
So it's 3x on 2, and then we factor this as a difference of cubes. This, remember, is 4 cubed. So it's going to be, first of all, same sign, x minus 4, then x squared opposite sign, so plus 4x, and then always positive, and 4 squared is 16. So that's how we factor that one. So you actually end up with this common factor coming out, and then the rest of it being a difference or sum of cubes, in this case, a difference of cubes. Then the next thing that we look at that's new is a quartic expression that's factored as a trinomial. So these only apply, or this only works, when you have three terms. That's why it says factor as a trinomial. And the terms have to be x to the fourth, x squared, and then no x's. They have to be even and jumping by, let's say they have to be jumping by two, so four, two, and zero. And what we do is we factor these like quadratics. So you're used to factoring quadratics by looking at this is four. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me four and add to give me minus five. So those are going to be four and one, and they're both going to be negative. So it's minus one and minus four. But instead of putting x in here, which is what we're used to, we put x squared. Okay, So you factor it as if this is a quadratic, but it's a quartic, that is, it's to the fourth power. So what happens then is these, instead of being x minus 4 and x minus 1, they're x squared minus 4 and x squared minus 1, and that means that these become now differences of squares. So you should recognize that as x minus 2, x plus 2, and this is x minus 1 and x plus 1. Okay, so that's how you factor a trinomial that's a quartic. Okay, here's another example. So you have 4, you have 9, and then you have 37 in the middle. So you look and say, okay, well, how do I factor this one? Well, you slide this over here, okay, and multiply. So we get x to the fourth minus 37x squared plus 36. Then you factor this like normal. So you get x squared minus 36 and x squared minus 1. All right. And then you divide by that 4 that we slid over. And this should be review for you. If not, you can look up um, slide and divide on the internet somewhere, on YouTube or other places, and you can see how it works. Or you can ask me for help. But x squared minus 36 divided by 4 becomes 9. And then this becomes x squared minus 1 quarter. And what we do is we then slide up at the end. So we slide the 4 back up here. So we make it 4x squared minus 1. Okay? And then we're not done because these aren't just x's, they're x squared. So now we look at those and recognize, hey, that's a difference of squares. That's x minus 3, x plus 3. And this is a difference of squares. It's 2x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. And that's how we end up with our final answer. That is how that trinomial up here, this factors. And we should make a note that when you're factoring, you can always check your answer by expanding. In other words, you can multiply it back out and see if you get the same thing. Okay? So if you do x minus 3 times x plus 3, you get back to here, right? When you expand that and you get back to there. And then I'll just do this in another pen color. So you can see what I'm talking about, but if I expand this back out, so if I say x squared times 4x squared first, that gives me 4x to the fourth. Then I do x squared times minus 1, so that gives me minus x squared. Then I do uh, 9 times 4, so that's minus 36x squared. And then I finally do minus 9 times minus 1. And I get plus 9, and that gives me 4x to the 4th. If I add these two middle terms together, minus 37x squared, and then plus 9, which is what I started with up here. You see what I mean? So you can check your answer to say, did I factor that correctly? In order to check, to, just to make sure that it's, it's not off somewhere. Okay? Um, the last one, uh, not the last one, sorry because it has two pieces to it, but you're going to 
also be able to group different parts to find a common factor. So grouping to find a common factor means that you're going to look at a question and you're going to notice, first of all, there's four terms here. So the trinomial stuff that we were just doing is out. The difference of cubes is out because the difference of cubes only has two terms. So we have to try to do something else. And what we're going to do is we're going to group them. So we're going to notice that these and these have a common factor. Okay, so this, these, these two terms, we can group them and take out an x squared, and we're left with x minus 2, just out of these two terms. Here, we can take out a minus 16, and we're left with x minus 2, okay, because 16 minus 16 divided by minus 16 is 1, and 32 divided by minus 16 is minus 2. So then, what that allows us to then do is to notice, okay, well, that means that x minus 2 is actually a common factor. It's in both terms. So I write it out front, and then I write what's left. What's left here is x squared, and what's left here is minus 16. Okay? And then, if I can, I factor this. So this is a difference of squares. It's x minus 4 and x plus 4. And so that's how we factor. So we group, okay? Then we take a common factor out of each group. So we take out whatever is common, and what's left over, the thing that's left over after we remove the common factor from each group should be the same. So in this case, they're both x minus 2. And then you factor that out, and away you go. So here, same idea, except you're going to group these three terms and these three terms. So we're going to take out an 8 because there's an 8 in each term, and we're going to take out an x to the 3. And what we're left with here is x squared. Here we're left with 40 divided by 8 is 5, so minus 5x. And then here, 32 divided by 8 is 4. And the x cubed is gone. And then here, all I'm going to do is change the signs. I'm going to take out a minus 1. Okay, now you notice, hopefully, that this is the same now in both of these. So I'm going to remove it. I'm going to write it out front as x squared minus 5x plus 4. And then, the inside here, 8x cubed is left in the first term. And there's nothing here, so we put a 1 in there as a placeholder. And then we look at, okay, can I factor this? And the answer to that question is, yes, you can. It's x minus 1, x minus 4. This guy is, okay? And then this guy is now a difference of cubes. So we're going to have 2x minus 1 multiplied by 4x squared, and then opposite sign, right? So plus 2x and then plus 1. It's always positive. So those are the factors. That's my answer to that. So that's how you group to find a common factor. You group sets of terms so that you get the same thing when you take the common factor out of them. And you'll have more practice with this, but that's the idea. And then the final one is grouping to get a difference of squares. So in order to do that, okay, you, you want to group it so that you get x plus m all squared and then minus n squared. And you might think, well, what in the world are you talking about? But if you look at this function, all right, we say, well, x to the fourth plus 5x squared plus 9 doesn't factor. What would be nice if it's, is if I had a number in here that did factor, right? So I want to make that a 6, because then I can, I can factor it as x plus 3 and x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. So I want to make that a 6. So what I do is I say, I'm going to make that a 6. I'm going to add in an x squared. To make this, what the reason why it's called a grouping to find a difference of squares is you're trying to create a perfect square. So this, x to the 4th plus 6x squared plus 9, is a perfect square. It's x plus 3 squared. However, because it's x to the 4th and x squared, it's actually x squared plus 3 all squared. So you want to make this into this form. Remember this, the form of a perfect square was a squared plus 2ab plus b squared? So if you're looking at this as b is 3 and a is x, then you want a 6 in there. Because 2 times 
3 times x gives you 6x. So that's how I knew that I wanted that to be a 6. All right? And that's actually x squared, I guess. And then the problem is I can't just add an x squared, so I have to also subtract it. So I added one there, so I subtract it here, which carries down to here. And this one's a little bit more complicated. It's a little strange. But what ends up happening then is I have a difference of squares now. So I have x squared plus 3 minus x and x squared plus 3 plus x. Okay, and then I just write that as a sort of more ordered form with the x's in there. And that's the idea. Okay, so just quickly do one more. I want x to the fourth. Here, I actually want to take out four of them because I want just the 2x in there to make that a perfect square. I want that to be x plus 1, sorry, x minus 1. Squared. But if I take four of them out, I'm just going to write them over here because I have 6 and I only want 2. So I let write the other four out here, which makes it minus 4x squared. And then this becomes, again, a difference of squares. So now it's x minus 1 minus uh, 2x. x squared, sorry, these should be squared. And then x squared minus 1 plus 2x. And then finally, you do x squared minus 2x minus 1. And x squared plus 2x minus 1. And you look to see if you can factor those. And when you look at this one, you need 1 and 1 to give you minus 2, and that doesn't work, and you need 1 and 1 to give you plus 2, and that also doesn't work with minus 1, so because the only options are minus 1 and 1, so this would have to be 0. So they don't factor, so you're done. So that's the idea of, of factoring by grouping to get a perfect square or a difference of squares. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just take some time to practice those things before we move on.